Well, thank you very much. It was working? Yeah. 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 Not only is it a 10-year-old karaoke machine, but the microphone doesn't work on it. So we stole this off of a Disney karaoke machine. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how low-key we're going. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for, for coming. Thank you, Marsha, for, for hosting us. Thank you, Jess, for coordinating everything that's that's gone on here tonight. This is really overwhelming. And, uh, when we first talked to Marsha about this, I, it was like maybe 40, 50 people max. Uh, we had over 100 RSUPs, plus a lot of people just in Tallahassee or elsewhere. And, you know, I, I think a testament to what we're trying to do, I'm not even going to read about the big man. Um, <laughs> a testament to what we're trying to do. When I ran in, in 2020, I, I, came on, I came onto this board hoping that I had a background and a skill set and a, a relationship within the community that could help Manatee County, help the people of Manatee County. And I feel these past three years we, we've done that. Uh, the past three years we've certainly changed the dynamic and the, the narrative about workforce housing. We're seeing a lot more of it get built because we pull back on regulations, we pull back on parking ratios, we've really given it a focus because you know our young professionals, our, our seniors that are getting priced out of where they live, They're, our teachers, our law enforcement, need a place to live here because at the end of the day putting them close to their employment putting them close to the services helps with all of your infrastructure as well this is a community benefit this is not a benefit solely for the people moving in there and i believe that's a narrative that's really transcended the board to the the community and really got people talking about it. you're seeing people on board with that concept that maybe weren't back in 2020 while i was having similar conversations in these past three years we've worked on lowering the millage on your taxes. We've lowered it twice by a total of 0.5 mills. Uh, we've done that without cutting any services. I've worked hard with, with finance, first with Jam Brewer and then with Sheila, to, to make sure we weren't cutting any services because I never want Manatee County to be the low cost alternative to Sarasota. That's not my goal in life, is to create a bedroom community that's low cost and low service. That, that's a terrible place to live and I'm not gonna have that here in Manatee County. We've also worked on lowering overall cost and burden for people in Manatee County. We've made all the buses free. We're on an 18-month pilot program. It's been hugely successful. We've had counties all over the state reaching out to discuss this program with us. It's had profound positive impacts for Manatee County as a whole, for the people who ride the buses, for the people who drive the buses. It, it's been a great project. Hopefully after the pilot ends, the end of April, we continue that permanently. And we're working on uh, a number of other things. We're finally bringing Tunnel to Towers here. I, I thought that was going to be something that... It, it, it's, it's an amazing opportunity that I honestly thought I was going to mention on the dais and get carried out on six sets of shoulders, uh, as saving $9 million that we had budgeted and getting a amazing one of the top nonprofits in the country to come in here and help our homeless veterans. Instead, it was 18 months of banging my head against the wall. But they are coming now. We have the to land over. They're taking access to it at the end of February, and they'll start the process of building the Veteran Village for 122 units, a tiny home and multifamily to help our homeless and our near homeless veterans here in Manatee County. So there's a lot we're doing, and there's a lot we're still going to be doing these next four years, God willing, if we can not only get this board going in the right direction, but continue the momentum that I'm hoping I have on some of these projects. We're working on getting a trail system out east and ultimately getting it completely throughout the county. We've, we've got appropriations, thanks to Representative Buchanan, for the north-south piece out east, as well as an east-west piece between Parrish and Palmetto. That's going to help our infrastructure. It's going to help our outdoor activities. It's amazing opportunities. Little things like that that are just going to significantly improve the quality of life for everyone in Manatee County. But, you know, in spite of everything we're trying to do, the reality is I need three other votes on this board to do anything, and it's become painfully obvious these past 12 months that I don't have three other folks on this board to do almost anything. So, you know, you look around and say, why is that? You know, everyone supposedly was conservative who came on the board. We all campaigned together. The reality is our election process is broken. And what you get presented in a campaign is not what you get 
governed as once they get on this diet. Our, 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 these campaigns have re reverted to an attack on each other endlessly. It's a, it's a cash grab of who can raise the most money in the fastest from the smallest group of people to just beat down your opponent. What you're asked to do every two years is vote for the least worst candidate. That's literally what this has come down to, is trying to make the other person worse than you. Not make yourself look better, not talk policy. It's performance-based campaigning. And it results in performance-based governing once you're up on the diets. We govern based on federal and state issues we have no control over, forgetting the fact that potholes are nonpartisan. And I think the reason this is resonating here in this campaign is if you look around this room, there are far right Republicans in this room right now. There are right of center Republicans in this room right now. There are NPAs in this room right now. There are Democrats in this room right now. There's a regional director for the forward party in this room right now. Because I answer all of your calls. I answer all of your emails. I will speak to all of you. I may not agree with all of you, and you certainly may not agree with me, but that's what local politics is. And we're failing to that on this board. So you have an opportunity this election cycle because there's a lot of big issues. Things you read about in The Observer, you read about in The Brainton Times that have really got people riled up. What, what they fail to mention, or what the board doesn't want you to know, is there's a good chance this comp plan rewrite will not be done by November 2024. There's a good chance this impact piece study isn't going to get done and voted on by November 2024. There's a chance if the appeal takes long enough, the wetlands, the wetland buffers may not hit the council by November 2024. Who's going to vote on that is not necessarily the current board. It's who's sitting in those seats after this next election. And that's where everyone in Manatee County needs to speak to. Thank you. Did you not hear me the whole time? <laughs> I'm not starting over. You, you read it. Up. Okay. You have to look at the transcript. Okay. But everyone needs to realize that, that who is on this board at the end of 2024 is going to make meaningful decisions for you and your kids and your kids' kids. You need to tell everybody you know to be an informed voter. Because if you're in this room, you're not the base for those campaigns. If you read the newspaper, you're not in the base for those campaigns. If you even sort of know what's going on in Manatee County, you are not in the base for those campaigns. They focus entirely on uninformed voters who show up to vote at the top line, in this case, the presidential race, and they're just going to click the button down. So you need to tell your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends. You need to inform them who the right candidates are, who's going to protect you, because what you're asked to do is pick the person who's 1% more conservative, because most of these are going to be closed Republican primaries. But what you get is somebody who's 20% less responsive because most people are voting on who had the mailer with the most flags and the most eagles and the most guns and like Trump the most, and that's who they vote for. What you end up with is not conservatism, you end up with incompetence because you got suckered into voting for people that you should have never voted for because people don't pay attention. So this, this cycle, I told everybody, and I said it in my campaign announcement, I am going to run a race the way I think a local race should be run. I am not going to hoard cash to LLCs. I told everyone I'm capping everyone at the $1,000 max. In fact, I had somebody call me last week, asked me where to send $5,000 to a pack. And I told them, I'm not using a pack. And they said, well, where do I send $5,000 to you? And I said, send me $1,000, keep your other four, I'm not taking it. <clears throat> I got another person who sent me two $1,000 checks, I voided one of them. That's not how I'm running this campaign. I'm running this campaign by getting petitions. I'm running this campaign by going to the fair every day and talking to every person sitting, waiting around for wrestling, multiple times a day, <laughs> every day you're on a fair with it. That's how I did it. Fun fact, if you're looking for petitions at the fair, people show up at races, people show up at the shows 10 minutes early, and they're bored in the stands waiting for their show to start. You get hit them all up. That's how I got shot at the signature. <laughs> So that, that's, how, that's how we're going to run this campaign. And I believe that's how other candidates, there's a lot of other candidates here in this room. 
That's how they're going to run this campaign. We're going to do it based on a real local campaign should be run. It, this does not need to be a half a million dollar race for a local job. It needs to be speaking to you. Look around. See who's collecting petitions and who's just using $6,000 of someone else's money. Look who's doing town hall. Look who's even giving you the time of day or cares. They don't. They're going to sit on their couch until August 20th, and they're going to send you endless mailers telling you whatever they want you to believe. And they're hoping enough of you do in fact believe it. That's how those campaigns are going to be run. That's not how this is going to be run. We need all of you, all of these candidates need all of you to go tell everyone, sign everyone's petitions, get everyone on the ballot, you know, donate where you can donate to everybody, because we are going to make a difference. Because I promise you, after 2024, one of two things are going to happen for all subsequent races. Either this year is going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the only way to win a race in Manatee County is to take the money and attack the opponent, or we're going to approve, we're going to prove that there's a better way of doing it. And if the first way wins, then all the 2026 people are going to run even further towards that money, and everything they do on the dais is going to be based solely on their re-election attempt. And nobody, no competent candidate is ever going to run for election here ever again because they know it's worthless to even attempt it. All they're going to do is get attacked endlessly and lose unless they do what they're told. So we need to fix this election cycle. I believe we have, we have candidates who can win. I believe we can do it the right way. I believe this community as a whole is sick and tired of a broken system. So get with the candidates, get with me, make whatever donations you can, pick up packets of petitions, please get them signed. You know, Find some place for all of us to talk. Find some place for me to talk. I'll come to your living room and talk to five of your friends. I'll come to your HOA and talk to 50 people. I'll come to your club and talk to 100 people. The more we can get the word out, the more we can stand strong as a community and do the right thing and take back our county, take back your voice. And you know, God bless all of you. Thank you for your support. Have a great night. Thank <laughs> you.